have a relationship with me. I don't feel like it's that big of a deal. I feel like it's Vlad disrespecting the culture. I don't feel like it's that big of a deal because he's been disrespecting the culture. Now you're taking personal shots at Dame Dash, one of our heroes, and making him out to be a bad father. And this is only appropriate in this business because we allow it. Because I talked to Vlad right after I put the video up that said, I'm not going to have a relationship with you unless you apologize. So he called me because we had a relationship and we spoke and we communicated like two intelligent individuals. Nothing to be angry about. It's nothing to be angry about because there's also a narrative around black people and hip hop that we're just a bunch of, you know, apes and gorillas and all we do is, you know, rap, rap hate speech. And you don't have an understanding of how to monetize this without us giving it to you. And then when we turn around and we want to be compensated or we want to participate in the lion's share of what's being generated, then we're ostracized and we're jokes are being cracked. Oh my God, this, this guy asked for 250 million. Well, the, you wouldn't know nothing about that because you're not worth two. Your talent doesn't equal up to 250 million. That's why the guys that are just okay at what they do shouldn't be able to talk about the greats. Charlemagne is great. Let Charlemagne crack jokes about Joe, another great. But this is the point that I'm making. Lord Jamar and Godfrey, you guys decided that the way to rectify this situation, and I quote, Vlad said the only way he'll apologize publicly is if he can sit down with the minister and tell him face to face. So that means that he would get an interview. And this man said that he was going to reach out to Elijah Farrakhan to try to make it happen. Like, bro, like, Please understand your value. Fuck Vlad. Understand your value as a black man in this culture. Like we hold Minister Farrakhan to a high regard and a high standard. We don't expect everybody else to do the same. We just expect for when they come into our culture to not disrespect our great ones. We don't need for DJ Vlad to understand how important and how powerful Farrakhan is. We don't need him to understand that. And him feeling like that he can negotiate the terms in which that he's gonna respect our culture further lets us know that he hasn't the slightest idea who the fuck he's talking about. Not only are you not getting an interview with the minister, you would never sit in the same room as the minister. Who the fuck do you think you are, man? Why are y'all talking about this like this is even realistic? That's a joke. That's a farce. That shit will never happen. This has nothing to do with Minister Farrakhan. We don't need you to like Minister Farrakhan, brother. You have to respect the culture. And I was just giving you an opportunity to do so while there is no repercussion to you not apologizing. That's when you show if you really have respect for the culture. That's when you show, oh, I'm a guest in the house of hip hop and I'm a proud guest in the house of hip hop. That's when you show those moments where you don't have to apologize. You chose not to. You chose to use that moment as a moment to flex your muscle, but you're not strong. I'm not gonna act like I can't just make you apologize if I wanna make you apologize, man. Like, if I just wanted shit to get violent, I could make you apologize like that. You know who you're never going to disrespect again, DJ Vlad? Rick Ross. Because he spoke to you using a language that you understand. You hear loud and clear. You understand that language. And I don't feel like it's helpful to, to the culture, nor is it healthy to my state of righteousness to relapse as a man and resort to easy easy acts of violence being sent your way to restore order. Easy. Nope, I won't do it. Because it's not that serious. But please don't ever think that you're important enough to where you'll ever get a conversation with, with, with the minister. You 
misquoting the minister is not that important. We're giving you more pub right now than, than how important this situation is. It's not that important. And the only thing that's, that's keeping you and your platform intact is the fact that we don't know our worth and our value. We're not all of us. Not all of us do. Me personally, I know mine. That's why the way I handled it was just no more relationship with you. You'll need me before I need you. I'll never need you for anything because your platform is not important to our culture. We always got to find a way to hold ourselves accountable for the role we play too. Oh yeah, well we, we rap about a lot of hate speech. We use, we use hate speech in our rap. We talk about kill a nigga this and kill a nigga that. Man, listen, man, you can't have slavery, Jim Crow, Willie Lynch, oppression, redlining, subjugation, marginalization, the war on crack, mass incarceration, any of these things without some self-hate. Somebody who has always dragged around transgressions, who were born into his or her transgressions, and always, always suppressed feelings and never knew how to communicate and has always been oppressed. You can't expect for somebody like that to find a, a means of expression and not expect to, to get the harsh truths. You can't expect for it not to be self-hate and projecting self-hate onto others and being frustrated at, at, at not being able to inflict harm on you know, the oppressor, so you, you harm the closest thing to you.